All right. So I can defy God twice, or I can do exactly what God says once. Ah, it's a winning deal to me. But where do... Oh, there's a, there's a message over here. No way out, no way out, no way out. Oh, wow. I guess uh, one of the robots kind of lost their mind a little bit. They weren't able to solve all the puzzles. They probably got really jealous of all their uh, seeing all their robot friends who could. Whoa. Kinda wasn't expecting this. I think it's just a bunch of what the fuck is this thing? Uh these don't even look remotely human. They don't look like anything I can recognize at all. It's like a jawbone skull horn. Pretty weird sex toy. Okay, let's go over here and see if I can find that, uh, that, like, yellow piece puzzle. Is it in this area? There it is. That's what I was looking for the whole time. Bouncing side by side. Okay, we have a couple of mines that are doing the aforementioned bouncing side by side. I can use this thing to synchronize them, I think. But it's putting that down there. And that will cause both of the mines to like be like synced up in their cycle. No! Oh. Alright, all I need to do is get them... Like, right now they're totally uh, out of phase with each other. So if I come over here and I just block one of them uh, at precisely the right moment, I'll be able to get them in phase with each other. And then this won't uh, actually be all that difficult. Okay. Okay. What? No. Man, that's not cool. Okay. I thought I had it, but that's fine. Alrighty. Let's come over here. Down. The other thing is that I'm also solving this, I think, in a less efficient way than I actually need to. Because I do have a laser beam over here, which does grant me a connecty. But... I can also do it this way. Uh, and this way is hilarious. Okay. I've almost gotten them uh, in phase with each other. Or at least super duper close to being in phase with each other. Alright, for all intents and purposes, that's pretty close to being in phase. So, I think that all I need to do is just do this, and I think that this will probably uh, be fast enough for me to get on in there. Easy enough. Well, excuse me for solving it the hard way. Uh. Come on, let me out. All right, I'll we'll have to do it with the connecty. Come over here, grab the connect. Oh, look, a star. Boy, those red star puzzles look very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to actually figuring out how to solve them. Okay, we can do that. We can pick up the stream. Okay, that's, that's cutting it way too close for comfort to try and get in. Yeah, that mine came right across the road I would have, where I would have been running. Uh, but this is pretty trivial at this point to just wait in front of the door so I can drop my connecty off and uh, get, this, uh, get this puzzle solved. Good times. Uh, I wonder if a gate, uh, a ladder had to have opened. There we go. Okay. 
and I can leave here in peace. And the only remaining puzzles in this zone are ones that require me to defy Elohim, which is something I just have absolutely zero interest in doing. So we are going to head out of this world after I read this, apparently. Few come this far, but I believe we must seek out the secrets of the world if we want to truly serve the generations of come. Uh, generations to come. Uh, Selafiel. Uh. Selafiel, huh? That sounds, uh, like the aforementioned, like. Never mind. Uh, let's go in, uh, into Milton Library Assistant. Hello again. I've been checking your responses against library archives, and in order to assist you further, I need some additional information. Can you tell me what it is to you, the important difference between a pebble and a tree? Uh, a tree is alive. Good. Now, what is the relevant difference between a tree and a frog? A frog is conscious. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's try something harder. What's the difference between a frog and you? What makes you a person? <coughs> uh, nothing important. Frogs are people, too. Wait. 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 Hold on. I wasn't thinking. Ah, oh, damn it. Keith, you gave me a hint. That wasn't cool. Oh. Well... It's not inconsistent with what you said earlier. If all something something has to do if all something has to do to be a person is resist decay, then every living creature is a person. How about we strike a deal? I'll agree that animals are every bit as valuable or pointless as human beings. You agree that there are some activities persons are capable of capable of that frogs are not, because if frogs are people, then the certification program is radically unfit for purpose. <laughs> Agreed. Very sensible. Terminology is so important. What I'd like to put to you is that the important difference between you and a frog is that you are rational. You are self-aware. That is what makes you a person. Let us take stock. I think we can tentatively conclude two things. A person must be rational or self-aware. A person must be conscious. What I suggest we do to help resolve your problem is ask whether you are in fact those things. Are you aware of yourself? Can you rationalize your existence? Yep. I tend to agree with you. Though your responses so far have been a little eccentric, I am resigned to admit that you are right. The matter of whether or not you are conscious seems rather more elusive. What is consciousness in your opinion? Uh, consciousness is what it's like to be me. That hardly answers the question. What is it in ordinary terms? Can I touch it? What is it made of? Uh... Consciousness is a complex functional system. That's what I personally believe. Interesting. Thinking. You know, I really feel like we're making progress. We'll have you through that certification program in no time. In the meantime, I will mull over your proposal and notify you if I come to any conclusions. Robots. There once was a robot from Spain. It went a little insane. It found out that its data had never left beta and needed to upgrade its brain. There once was a bot from Japan whose eyes the numbers could scan. Uh, it found that the facts required an axe and had a very serious plan. That's a, that's a very poorly formatted limerick in the second part there. There once was a brilliant AI whose circuits were built not to fry. It caught in a loop, it caught in a loop, it caught in a loop. That's, a, that's another poorly formed limerick. That whole thing reminds me of when, in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, when Data wrote, he wrote a poem to his cat called Ode to Spock. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Wasn't that a like, whole episode about like determining if he was like a person or something like that? There was an episode about that, but I don't think it was the same episode. If I remember, there was like a two-part series, because it had to do with, like, lol, right? Where it was determining if Data was, like qualified to be lol's dad or something yeah to like procreate without permission yeah i guess like from picard yeah or the federation yeah those are great episodes if you're into like the stuff that this shit that this um 
game is taking, like, talking about, then you should definitely watch the uh, episodes that we're referring to in Star Trek The Next Generation. There's this arc where uh, the android Data um, basically has, like, an adoptive daughter, and uh, the Federation has to determine if Data uh, is, like, he meets the legal definitions of, like, personhood and therefore, like, fatherhood or something like that. Yeah, like, if he's... It's pretty wild. If he has the right to raise her or if she's a property of the Federation. That's right, yeah. All right, well, boundary.txt. What, said he, makes the difference between man and all the rest of the animal creation? Every beast that strays beside me has the same corporal necessities with myself. He is hungry and crops the grass... He is thirsty, and drinks the stream. His thirst and hunger are appeased. He is satisfied and sleeps. He rises again and is hungry. He is again fed and is at rest. I am hungry and thirsty like him, but when thirst and hunger cease, I am not at rest. Then, raising his eyes to the mountain, This, said he, is the fatal obstacle that hinders at once the enjoyment of pleasure and the exercise of virtue. How long is it that my hopes and wishes have flown beyond this boundary of my life, which yet I have never attempted to surmount? Second Thesis In man as the only rational creature on earth, those natural predispositions which are intended for the use of his reason should not be completely developed only in the species, not in the individual. Reason in a creature is a faculty for extending the rules and purposes of the use of its powers far beyond natural instinct, and knows no limits in its designs, yet it requires, it does not act according to instinct, but requires trials, practice, and instruction in order to progress from one degree of insight to the next, sort of like a video game. Therefore, each human would have to live excessively long in order to learn how he could make full use of his natural capacities, or, if nature had given him only a short term of life, as she indeed has, so she would require a perhaps unpredictable series of generations each passing its enlightenment to the next, to finally develop her seeds in our species to the degree that she considers appropriate. And that point in time must be, at least as an idea, the goal of man's efforts, for otherwise his natural capacities would have to be regarded as largely meaningless. Immanuel Kant. Huh. I have to think about that one. Which I guess I'm going to do... Um, that's interesting. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to probably call it here. But that's very fascinating stuff. I'll have to think about all this. Anyway, take care. Good night.